Hello everyone, it's 204 Underground again, and I'm back with another installment of Dubstep Theory. And today, I'm, what I'm going to be doing is continuing my discussion on how to fill out your songs. But this time, I'm going to be talking about using background synths, pads in the example I'm about to show you, and strings. So this is sort of a part two, but because of time, I decided to split the two videos so that it wouldn't end up being 20 minutes long. And also because I realized that most people don't like part twos. So if you're one of those people, think of this as a continuation on how to fill out your drops and not a part two. So first, let's go ahead and look at those strings. Now the reason I use strings in this song is because I wanted to give the track an orchestral dubstep sound, and just to help fill out the drop. If you want to listen to the rest of the orchestral parts, then the link to this song will be in the description. So let me go ahead and just play you the string parts soloed so that you know what I'm talking about. So before we look at the notes, let's go ahead and look at the string patch so you can get a good string sound. So if we go ahead and open up the combinator, we'll see several compressors, stereo imagers, reverb, and then some EQ down here. But don't worry about these. These are just to help the strings fit in the mix of the song, so you don't need those specific settings in your track. But the important part is down here. We have this line mixer 6 to 2, and then three NNXTs plugged into this with each three different string patches. And you can find these patches by going to the Reason Orchestral Sound Bank, right here, strings, and then just hit cellos, and then they'll be in there. The three patches I used are the VCS Natural Harmonic, the next is VCS Acro MP Lite, uh, a light I assume is LT, and then the third one in final one is the VCS Long F or Long Forte. So next let's go ahead and look at these EQs that I have on these string combinators. The first one is just high passing the sound and cutting the low frequencies and then cutting around 100 to 200 hertz to remove some of the muddy frequencies and then just slightly boosting the high end right here. If we go ahead and open up the second EQ, it's just cutting the muddy frequencies to give the strings a clearer sound and then just boosting the mids a little. And then finally, if we move on to this third one, we'll see that it's almost identical to the second one, just the settings and amounts aren't quite as extreme. So now let's go ahead and move back over to the sequencer because we have that part finished. All I'm doing with the strings is just playing chords that are in the scale of D-sharp major, which is the key of the original song that I was remixing. Also, the chords are really big chords, and what I mean by that is that it's the same chord copied across different octaves, as you can see right here. Then after the chords, I just play the same notes as the lead synth we covered a few episodes ago. You can find a scale of reason by creating a Neptune pitch adjuster, and then just selecting whatever scale you want. For example, if we wanted to do D-sharp major, it would be like this and then the lights show all the notes that are in that scale. And don't worry, I'm gonna go into more detail about this in the next video when I cover how to compose and choose notes in a dubstep drop. So in summary for now, just choose notes that are in the key of the song and that sound good with the basses and synths you made in your drop. So next, let's go ahead and look at this pad part. Before we dive into the patch and everything, I'm gonna go ahead and play you the sound so you know what I'm talking about. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to the combinator. The patch I'm using is called Super Blades Pad, and when you're using a pad in a song as a background synth, you want to have some sort of white noise to it, because the subtle use of the noise can really help fill things out. And also, you want to choose a pad that sounds like it's changing or evolving, because that'll help add some variety to the drop. So to find the patch I use, just go to the Reason Factory Sound Bank, Combinator Patches, and Pads, and it should be there. And all I did here is just add some simple plate reverb, high pass the sound, and just remove a little bit of these muddy frequencies. Now let's go ahead and move back to the sequencer. Keep in mind that the pad is not being used as a lead or a melody, unlike the strings, so when the drop is playing, you don't actually hear the pad. Instead, you just sort of feel its presence. So if we look at the notes, there's just these long drone notes that are in the same root note as the chord that we were playing with the strings, which is D sharp, 
right here. So if you want the root note of a chord, it's just the note that the chord is named after. So example, if we played a D-sharp major chord, it would be D-sharp that is the root note. So when composing pads, it's best not to go crazy with the melody because it's just a sound effect. But actually, if we move on to this next section, you'll see that I just completely contradicted what I said with this crazy melody that the lead synth and strings were playing in that second half. Even though that's not something you normally want to do, it just worked for this section and brings me to the number one rule of making music, and that is there are no rules. 90% of what I do that ends up sounding completely awesome is an accident in breaking some sort of rule. All right, guys, so that's all I have for today. And if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to comment or send me a message on any form of social media that you so desire. And as always, keep the request coming. Also, if you guys have any mixing questions or just can't get something to sound right in one of your songs, then go ahead and send it to me on SoundCloud and I can try and help you out. And if you learned something, then subscribe for more videos. And as always, like and comment if you liked the video to help me out. Thanks again, guys. And until next time, Tool of Underground out.